You know, my friends, our world does a great job of seducing us into the illusion that being first is best, no matter what it is. Being first is what it's all about. Whether it be being first picked for the team or first in our social group to earn the most money, great satisfaction is supposedly achieved with being first. You know, our egos, our egos can easily become our gods. And life can be something we do, a series of predestined roles that we play on this road to success. Our stages are set with all the props that we need to get us to where we think we need to go. And so we dance from one stage to the next, barely taking time to breathe as we touch each component, making certain everything is where it needs to be. And yet in doing so, we get tired of playing the puppeteer of our life's characters and pawns, leaving our souls parched and lifeless. The great martyr, St. Oscar Romero, wisely said that we should aspire not to have more but to be more. My friends, it's quality, not quantity, that matters most in the kingdom of God. See, Jesus wants nothing to do with our materialistic, success-driven lives. In being so consumed with our own personal achievements versus a genuine investment in our life as a humble disciple of Jesus Christ, we become caught up in so many deceptive illusions. Me before you. Us versus them. Personal security and safety over universal harmony and peace. Making more and more money versus time-honored principles and virtues such as honesty and kindness, compassion and love. My friends, the world and its people are in a crisis. You know that as well as I do. And so as a result, faith and family are suffering. We are often so confused in trying to figure out what's important that it's not even funny. Our young families especially suffer. You know, running from one thing to another dance recitals, hockey games, karate, soccer, and so many other extracurricular activities that just leave everyone exhausted. One after another of these so-called necessities takes time away from simply being together as a family, properly worshiping and praising God, and humbly appreciating life. We convince ourselves that all of these so-called necessities, they're essential in order for our children to become successful. And while each one of these things is fine to pursue in its own right, the way the package often comes together, however, is destructive. And yet we're overlooking what we really need to work on the most, our souls. What we don't realize is that human beings have lost something, especially important along the way of life. We have lost our innocence. We also don't realize that we want it and need it back. We get confused thinking that the hole we're feeling deep within is meant to be filled with something else. Only Jesus Christ can restore our lost innocence. You know, there is wisdom to God's wonderful commandment to keep holy the Sabbath day because we need a day of intentional worship and playful rest. When we connect with the truth of God in word and Eucharist as we're doing here this morning, it makes all the difference in the world. In keeping the Sabbath holy, we also can find time in the business of life to celebrate and to play, when we can be playful, joyful, and even somewhat carefree, my friends, life is good. 
Relationships are meant to be celebrated. They're meant to be enjoyed. You know, if you go back to the gospel a minute, that's why Jesus loved the image of a child. You know, there's a playful innocence about children. They don't manage life. They live it. There is no selfish ambition present in the innocent child. Only the desire to please. Thus we have here the makings of a faithful servant of the Lord. One who is detached from a preoccupation with self. So that God can tap them to be instruments of his peace and love. And my friends, we cannot be useful instruments of God unless we begin to perfect the ministry of being innocent. And we cannot begin to do that until we rid ourselves of the world's misleading illusions and invest ourselves in the kingdom of God. When we make that challenging choice, the tables begin to turn. We may find ourselves moving to a lesser place in the world's eyes, but to a more prominent place in God's eyes. Sadly, however, many find all of this much too challenging and even frightening. Again, St. Oscar Romero expressed these words of wisdom as a recipe for true success. Beautiful is the moment in which we understand that we are no more than an instrument of God. We live only as long as God wants us to live. We can only do as much as God makes us able to do. We are only as intelligent as God would have us be. And my friends, can you imagine what the world would look like if we believed this? And if we taught this to our children as a necessary and well-grounded life lesson to learn? We might actually stop worrying about being first and experience the joy of life. And when we experience joy, my friends, that is when we experience God, who is life, life for our souls.